So we, we talked about the anatomy of poi circles, of spinning circles. Basically, when you're spinning something, its rotational energy wants to normalize into a plane, which is why we end up talking about planes so much with poi. When you're spinning in a particular plane, making the circle, you have a direction of spin. It's like a wheel rolling in that direction. And no matter how you orient yourself to that circle, if you don't stop it and change direction or bend the plane around, your wheel is always going to be rolling that way. At some point or another, though, you get, you get to a boundary where you can cross over to the other side of that plane, because planes have two sides. When I do that, I'm on the other side of the plane, and the direction my wrist was rotating in, in order to make the poi spin towards the direction it's rolling, changes. So right now, my wrist is rotating clockwise, no matter how I orient myself on this side of the plane. But when I switch over, now my wrist is spinning anti-clockwise. Getting to know that and understanding how that feels and integrating that into uh, what your body does will make poi a lot less confusing. Your poi is continuing to do what it's doing and you're changing as you move around it. So we played with walking around the poi and trying to keep it on a plane, switching over to the other side but continuing on. You can get twisted up, you can twist, walk backwards. For a challenge, you can you can do this isolated. Try it with the cat eye. What's the cat eye you say? And then we focused on cross points because as you as you're turning around and you have to you have to cross from one side of the plane to the other, that tends to happen more naturally by doing a figure eight. We're not often actually walking around our poi when we're performing. We focused on being able to be accurate with our cross points and aim them in different places. A good way to visualize the cross points of a figure eight, once again, is with two hoops. It's not a flat figure eight, it's a figure eight that's bent around you. So you've got a circle on either side, but they meet in a point in the middle. And that point can be, you can point that cross point at different angles. So we played with not just aiming our cross point out in front of us at the horizon, but moving where we aim the cross point at different angles, all the way down towards the ground, hitting a point on the ground, bringing it all the way up, 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 up to a cross point on the ceiling. We played with being able to stop, turn around, and start spinning in reverse continuing to hit cross points and bringing those cross points down. So we're playing with getting a, a full range of motion, all the possible angles around a big circle that you can put your cross points at. We also played with this standing more in wall plane, this sort of fencer's stance. And that allows for a nice smooth transition all the way around your body. One thing that will really help with that, if you look at the wall, so in this case I have the mirror wall and the curtain wall, sort of say that to yourself in your head, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror, curtain, mirror. Keep focusing on that as you make your turn and you can make the turn with it over your head without uh, adding any extra beats. And if you really want to be thorough, you can also use the cross point in between your legs too, so you can go all the way around the clock. After you've played with cross points with one poi, you can start playing with two by doing two beat weaves or two beat mills. And so you can take you can take this two beat and point its cross point around a variety of different orientations. 
Whenever you get to the horizon, you actually have to switch which hand's on top so you can keep going. So that range of motion really will get you comfortable with any of the possible mills and weaves that you can do. It'll get you comfortable with a water mill going under your leg, hip mills, weaves, shoulder mills, windmills, other shoulder mills, so on and so forth. Since we were playing with split time, another thing that's good to practice is separating your point into two circles next to each other. At that point you notice that there's a central focus point that they keep, keep touching or meeting while you're spinning in split time. So we actually practice this with just our hands and then move back to poi. Point your fingers together up at shoulder height. That's your central focus point. You move your hands up and down, all the way out to the T, up and down, back to the central focus point. Really getting used to always coming back to the central focus point is key to being able to hold split time with your poise separated or your arms separated, no matter what angle you end up spinning at. If your hands are clapping at that central focus point, you can make it big, you can make it small. You can, you can start out going same time, same direction, and then alter the timing, so one's dropping down while one's coming up. Then we, we played with turning from split time, same direction. As your point open out from that central focus point, that's when you can turn into long arm, split time, same direction, and continue turning to use the central focus point on the other side. I find that this is a really like easy way to visualize these different planes and the cross points. Because here I am, here's, here's planes on either side of me, and look at that, there's this cross point I could shoop, cross over with, and now, now I'm just hanging out on this wall. I could cross over here to this wall, I could cross back, and there's, there's my figure eight. Or I could, or... There's opposite directions, right? And what this insinuates is, even though I'm working with a cross point here, it insinuates the possibility of one opposite this cross point all the time. So not only can I cross here, but I can continue through, cross and reverse here, or I can follow this diagonal if I want to do a pirouette. Yeah. And that, that's the thing, like really, a pirouette does naturally go at this slight diagonal. And that's okay. Like some people, I think, when they when they start pirouetting like continuously, their planes get funky, and they either like fall out into horizontal spinning, or they're trying too hard to keep it like perfectly vertical. And the fact of the matter is, it naturally a pirouette does naturally go from down here to up there. That's an angle from here to there, right? And so you just have to sort of be aware of that and be able to keep that plane. And once you come back to being on one plane, that's when you flatten out. You go from this diagonal to a nice vertical plane again. If you're conscious of that and play with it and feel when you need to shift from this diagonal pure wet plane back into, okay, I'm on the vertical plane again, then that'll smooth out a lot of things.